everyone. My name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of LATAM Startups, and I'd like to thank you all for being here in this webinar. Uh, taking consideration, we have three sessions in different languages. I'll be presenting in English and Spanish, and my colleague Luisa Baptista will be presenting in Portuguese. Uh, this is the first session. Uh, we'll be in English for the next uh, 30 minutes, including questions. Um, for those that wish uh, information in Spanish, please connect at 1230. And for those that like to have questions in Portuguese, please connect at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Perlo, our community manager, uh, will be muting your microphones uh, or giving you access um, uh, to questions uh, in case you have any. Uh, she'll be interacting with you in the chat box. Uh, Perla is also sharing with you information on how to connect in Spanish and Portuguese um, if in, in case that, that you need the links uh, to join us later. <laughs> any other questions that you have, please uh, contact at latamestartups.org and uh, we'll be happy to answer any uh, particular questions that you may have about today's webinar. Uh, so let's start with this. Uh, we know that many businesses have been impacted by the restrictions of COVID-19. Uh, we work in daily basis uh, with startups and our expertise is actually in pivoting business model. Uh, we do this because normally uh, companies being a part of our business programs come from different countries and they require to adapt. Uh, so we hope this session will help you to adapt your business to this new reality or to any other market that you need to uh, enter uh, because of the situation or because uh, of the type of business that you have. So taking consideration these uh, three points before we actually start to see the points uh, for uh, you know pivoting your business model. Uh, so there are things that you have in your hands and your hands to manage. Other things like government regulations and managing a difficult microeconomic situation certainly are not under your control. I know uh, what I'm saying here is probably very basic um, and some people may find it frustrating, but at this point uh, when you need to, you need to stay focused and uh, do what you can do. Uh, basically, uh, my message here to you is that, uh, you know, focusing your business, focusing what you can do. Unfortunately, uh, whatever situation is passing your country right now or uh, the place that you are at uh, right now, is not under your control. So whatever you can do uh, for your business, for yourself and your community uh, that is in your hands, that should be uh, your focus at this point. Uh, the second point is about exploring all options possible to pivot uh, your business model. We are going to provide some tips to help you uh, to, go, uh, to go through the process, but uh, you know, don't, uh, try to explore as much as possible. Uh, you know, think about it, uh, think many ways, but don't think alone. That's one of our other points. If you cannot pivot your business model, explore the option to close and try a new project. This is hard decision. It's a very hard decision uh, to take, but sometimes uh, will save you time and money in something that may not work. Uh, try to put your emotions aside and try to think logically. Uh, through the personal and um, business um, situation that you may have right now. As a business owner, I have had different businesses in the past. And unfortunately, sometimes because of crisis, because of economic situation, because of changes in the market, I have had uh, to close businesses. And I know how painful it is, and I know uh, how frustrated it is sometimes. Um, but you know, identify when is a time to close is really important for any business owner. And also, you know, I take the opportunity, if that's the case, if that's, uh, that's your particular situation, take this opportunity to think in any other project that you can open up. Uh, you know, there are always opportunities in there. The main, main point of this is not to stop. Uh, try to do, th do something for, for, uh, for the sector that you are moving right now. Perhaps you are discovering a new sector after, uh, you know, all this COVID-19 uh, finish. We are still, uh, you know, under the crisis in many countries. So it's, it's time to explore. <laughs> So the next, uh, the next point will be um, that many other people are in the same situation 
talk with other people in your sector and complementing services or products in the area that you're moving. So this, this actually can give you actually uh, good ideas, uh, you know, uh, because uh, this is my point that I was mentioned before, just don't think alone, uh, try to contact other people and try to see what, you know, all together in the sector or maybe certain companies in the same sector can do in order to, uh, you know, achieve goals under the crisis. And also read and get inspiration from other entrepreneurs. There are several articles and blogs uh, from cases back in 2008 when, uh, when the other crisis uh, was happening, you know. It, so, I mean, companies and countries have gone through different crises in the past and usually you know entrepreneurs always get very good ideas or very good projects in, in those crises and there are people that you know they had managed to pass the situation and uh, do something actually better than they they were doing before so just get inspiration from those now, uh, whatever is your case, the first step to understand, uh, whatever is your case, this is, these are the potential scenarios that you may be facing right now under COVID-19. So either your business was running already and you had customers and you still, you probably still have customers. Um, either uh, you had a business that was about to run and you did have everything ready uh, to launch and then COVID-19 happened, or uh, you got an idea to run a business because of the crisis created an opportunity for you. So maybe uh, you are in any of those scenarios and this will help you, you know, to go through uh, what you need to do. So the first step is to understand what is the problem and uh, that uh, your existing or new customer is facing right now. Many people start with the solution, uh, but right now you need to identify uh, this, uh, especially in a specific this for uh, questions, you know, identify the answer for those. What is the pain for your customer? Can you provide a solution? Will the customer buy the solution? And how much is uh, your customer, uh, your potential customer, willing to pay for what uh, you are providing? Think that you maybe need to be very specific about the solution and see if you can actually have a market to launch or uh, to pivot. Uh, so it's, it's possible that you already know that startups, when they launch in the market, there is a, a big potential for you know startups to fail, and the first uh, you know. Um, reason for why they, they fail is because there is no uh, market need. Um, and that brings me uh, to the other point, uh, which is the tips. Uh, just don't look to uh, the local market only. Look to international markets because uh, specifically, specifically if you are in technology or maybe you are in, in, in any other traditional market, you can still get customers international, internationally and they may be your early adopter. And uh, this, uh, in fact, um, will depend on case by case. But my point on, in, in this is that, you know, when you see those statistics about, you know, uh, there is no market need, sometimes people just focus on what is the market need locally and perhaps you may have a market need internationally. That's, that's my point on that part. Uh, so you don't need necessarily to travel to other places right now. There is a, a bunch of things that you can do in order to validate other markets, especially here in Toronto, where we have so many people from other communities around the world uh, that can help you to validate if you, what you are doing is essentially good for uh, what they need, for example, in the countries that they represent. Uh, now, this goes to the second point that don't work just in assumptions. Uh, this is uh, really important. You may feel like uh, you already uh, know your sector. You may feel like uh, you have enough information and base uh, your decision in facts, start talking um, uh, in facts. So just to start talking with um, you know, your customers. It's important that you listen 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 right now is the time to ask questions and listen and that you know you will find more what is that you can provide to them and uh, the third point is that if you don't have customers yet 
then it's uh, time to start approaching to uh, people and potentially have uh, conversations with, uh, share conversations with customers. So don't approach to them just to sell something, you know, approach to them to listen and to see, uh, you know, what is it in particular that they need and try to validate with them, uh, you know, what you want, uh, you want to launch or what you are about to launch. So you have less, uh, let's say, chances of failure in the market if you do this. I know it's, uh, again, it's a lot of work uh, to try to approach people, but right now I believe that it's a good time. Uh, people are uh, trying to connect. People are trying to do something different right now, so perhaps you can bring something to the table that will be exciting for them. Uh, so what is your segment? Once you have talked with your potential customer, you should be able to respond to these questions. Um, so basically, who uh, were your client uh, prior to uh, COVID-19? Uh, perhaps it's the same client or it's a new client that you need to discover. Uh, who will be your first client uh, during COVID-19 or after COVID-19? Um, narrow it to the ideal first client, to the standard client that you may have, and also consider that client that may be good enough you know to start your business so uh, potentially uh, try to identify the features of those those clients what what type of clients will be that one and then uh, you should be able to identify your unique value uh, proposition after uh, this first phase and that will be uh, leading to other questions more like uh, who is your competitor uh, who, uh, how you differentiate from your competitor. And here is when, you know, I hear and my team here all over and over, uh, we differentiate because of the price, and we differentiate because of the service. So you have a problem there when you differentiate just in price and service. If it's price, then you will have potentially other people that may approach uh, with lower prices than you have. You know, price is always uh, a way people have a way to beat it uh, so just don't try always with price and with service uh, service is is something that is no um, it is perceived by the client right uh, so how you are going to make the client perceive that your service is better than your competitor uh, how well positioned is your competitor in the market right now uh, so they can perceive, you know, better your services all from the competitors. So that's the point about price and, and service. And um, have you analyzed the uh, strategy uh, from your competitor? What they are doing right now uh, under this situation to gain more customers? And the fourth part is about your strategy. What is that you are going to do? What are the points, milestones, goals that you have uh, in order to um, know, uh, you know how you're going to reach out clients? That's the fourth point. So now you can come up with a solution. How are you planning to validate this solution? Will be important. Um, so, uh, at this point, you may be familiar with what I'm implementing here. I'm using the Lean Canvas model. I'm putting together different questions in different order to get uh, key answers uh, that you need right now. So the Lean Canvas model is a very well-known model and you can adapt uh, your uh, business model under COVID-19 and the situation that you're passing through with this specific tool. So if you see here, uh, you know, many, many people uh, focus on the solution. So what we are proposing here is that uh, you are going to start with a problem and then you go to customer segments and then you can analyze the unique value proposition. And finally, you will get into the solution and then you can work in the other boxes, right? Uh, but right now, uh, in order to adapt or, or to pivot, uh, you need to ask, ask yourself the right questions and in the right order as well. So that will help you to uh, pivot and adapt your business model, whatever you have right now as, as a business. So uh, basically this tool is also helping you to create a business plan and a financial forecast. I know many people don't like to, all this, uh, but 
it's important for you uh, to do a, a due diligence and a stop and research before you go and launch in the market something that people may not pay because they may not need. Uh, so we work with different startups and I can tell you for sure startups uh, don't like to work in business plan. This is this feels like a, it's homework. Uh, this feels like a, it's something that um, you know they have to do because somebody's going to ask him or her uh, to do a, in some point, uh, but really makes you think. And that's the important part of having a business plan. Um, so you will find some resources in our website that will help you uh, basically uh, to pivot your business model. This is the first tool. And uh, you see uh, it has like 34 questions uh, that will help you to understand better uh, what will be the approach for your business. And then you have a business plan writer. And that business plan writer, uh, you know, is also kind of uh, a tool that you have there. Uh, it's a free tool that you can use. So basically with the answers that you have from pivoting business mode, you can copy and paste and put it in the business plan. And then, uh, you know, you have those free, free tools, uh, you know, to, to help you to analyze and to pivot and adopt, uh, you know, a new business model. Uh, now, there is a possibility in the business plan that we can review it and I, I will, uh, you know, go to that part in, in, in a couple of slides. Um, so, but it's important that you know that, you know, your business plan is helping you for, uh, to get loans, to get investment, to get grants and to get partners in the market. So just take in consideration that because uh, you know you may may be uh, looking for funding, you may be looking for opportunities to uh, you know cooperate with others, and this will help you to put a better case to them. And now, we are selecting ten business plans to get a chance to win three hundred dollars no matter where you are. So if uh, you're asking, for example, to review your business plan, we have a little cost associated with the review of the business plan, but those plans that are reviewed, uh, we are aiming to get uh, to 10, the 10 business plans that we see the best, uh, $300 that are not refundable. So uh, this is uh, basically, uh, you know, a little help that we can uh, give to the community. And uh, it's, it's very little, but we, we think that it could help in something. It could help in a marketing strategy to start something. Uh, so we don't care where you are located. You are located in an emerging market, you're located in Canada, wherever you're located, you can use, uh, you, can, you can have a chance to win that. Um, so being said all this, I'm now open for questions and uh, thank you again for uh, being here today and um, yeah, so this is it for now. Thank you.